Hey, I'm Cork Bob, and welcome back to Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Uh, I'm gonna continue where I left off after beating the air base. Had a lot of fun. Yeah, it's called Assault. It's the name of the air base. That's actually the same name of it in multiplayer. So, um, I was just actually playing uh, Wolfenstein Spear of Destiny. Ooh. <coughs> Wolfenstein 3D. And, uh, well, let me, let me, let me shoot the talk. Hands up out! Yeah, Kimbo 1911. Panzer Grenadier team is a real life uh, German anti tank team. And uh, we've captured a uh, commandeered Panzer tank. This thing is a Panzer tank. Panzer is a tank in Germany. So it's either a Mark III or a Mark IV Panzer. Uh, anyway. Woo! It's lost! Remember that. Oof! Is it Ow! Is that it? Oh. Anyway, I was playing Spear of Destiny. Um. Now keep moving. You must locate the extraction. You can't jump. I don't even want to try, but if you try to uh, look out this way, there's a sniper up in that bell tower to the left, and he automatically hits you and does massive damage. Anyway, the thing that was upsetting me about uh, Spear of Destiny, I was playing the original Spear of Destiny mission pack. So, normal Spear of Destiny. There's two expansion packs. Uh, expansion pack one. I think it's Return to Danger and something else. Anyway, and I was on map 13. A big map with a, like a center fort. There we go. Our team has just teamed up with the defecting scientist. And I'm not finding the exit for the light. And I'm normally very good at uh, navigating those types of maps. And actually, I found all but one of the secrets. Here. I found all but one of the secrets. Whew. This was to Mike Thompson. Because there is a boat flame thrower. Right here. Ah! I'll be burned alive. All right. But heavy <laughs> did that. The before the Let's go. Thank you for your assistance. We will move the scientist now soon. If you kill either him or these two dudes, you automatically fail the mission. It says mission failed. You kill the scientist who killed the Chrysler Circle member. But anyway, I was playing the. Uh, oh, and by the way, the flamethrower ammo is completely random. Eighty-one. Nah, that's fine. You know, since I'm loading the game. You can't, you can't get, um, I did help you, it's 86, it's random, and it's between a 4 and two, uh, 199, 43, <laughs> it doesn't really matter, every time I load the game it counts as an attempt, but since you can't get, uh, I want to get over 100, come on, there we go, 140, that'll do, <laughs> Only because I like to use a flamethrower later. Uh, anyway, so I was playing um, Spear of Destiny, a uh, Wolfenstein 3D, and I could not for the life of me find the exit. I actually found all but one of the secrets and uh, had killed, I think, pretty much all the enemies. Right, now, this, I have to actually kill that dude. As long as he's dead, everything's fine. Because he's the one that controls you. Do with a panzer fast! Ow! Dickhead, die! Ow! I got hit twice with a panzer fast. No! I will survive! Where's this dick? Where'd he go? 
die! <laughs> you enter now. Good luck on your mission. Damn! <laughs> I probably shouldn't save after that encounter. But I'm gonna because I'm a badass and I don't need help. I need to grab the remaining health that's over here. Grab some ammo. And let me reload my 1911. Actually, my cool 1911s. Can I? Wait, can I? Oh, yeah, hitting secondary fire brings up the second 1911. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Oh, they're gone! Oh! I thought they stayed. Anyway, so I got really pissed off because I could not figure out for the life of me where the exit was in this Wolfenstein 3D Spear of Destiny map. So after wandering around for like 10 minutes without shooting anyone or seeing, making any progress, I decided to look at a map. And it turns out that the exit is actually located behind one door in a special area that had a maze. And I just didn't find that particular door, the e elevator door, in the maze. I cleared the maze. I thought I cleared the maze, but I didn't. And that's 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 why I said I wanted to make a uh, Wolfenstein 3D gameplay and record myself playing. But I mean, it's going to be boring because I'm going to get lost a lot, and I die a lot on that level. Even though I got really fast reaction times, I was dying constantly because there were mutants on the level. Those uh, guys with the white faces and black hair and green uniforms with guns in their chest, they go bang, 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 that's it, you're dead. And they don't make a sound when they get alerted. So you don't know when you pissed one off, including when you fired your weapon. So you could shoot your gun or walk past the hallway and piss one off and not know you pissed one off. And it was just very demoralizing. I kept getting killed. I died like 30 times. And it, I don't know. I just want to kill some normal Nazis in, uh, in this game. This is a much more fair game with uh, much more in-depth... Uh, ooh. I'm going to fry this guy with it. Where is it? Hey. You're going to burn, bitch. <laughs> well, I'm screaming. guy with a flamethrower. Ow! Somewhere! Where is he? There's a dude with a flamethrower. He's right there. Let me use my powerful grenade. Oh, got him! Woo! My god, I'm getting slaughtered, man! Let me save. <laughs> anyway, um... Also, I want to apologize for the last gameplay. I was, I was being silly. I was making a lot of sound effects when I was reloading the gun. Oh no! That uh, sound I make. Look the anime of top. That's a, a parody of uh, Half Life. Um, what's it called? Uh, Counter Strike. When you reload an AK-47, it sounds like look the anime of top. check. And the Glock, too, makes the same sound effect. And my friends used to, uh, whenever they were reloading, they would make that sound over the, uh, the phone. Because we didn't have Vox or uh, Skype or voice um, gameplay back then. We used to talk over the phone. So every time I reload, I make that silly sound. Same thing with the sniper rifle. And I was, bleh, when I was shooting guys. And it just takes me back to when I was 10 years old. I really feel like a kid playing this game. It's a really fun game, and I know I was being silly and stupid and kind of immature in my last gameplay, but you know it's all good fun. You know I'm not I'm not really I'm not really playing to impress anybody. Bleah. <laughs> yeah, see what I mean? I'm not really playing to impress anybody or uh, you know get a, a, an audience. If you think I'm annoying, don't watch me. If I piss you off or, or you find me offensive, don't watch me. I'm not uh, I'm not making these videos mainly for myself. I know I'm never going to be able to make any money on YouTube by uh, recording videos because uh, I play violent games and if you show a gun in the gameplay or blood or curse, it's automatically demonetized. I don't care. Whatever. 
the only way to make money on YouTube being a, uh, a gamer is to get sponsored. That's never going to happen. So anyone who watches my videos, I hope you enjoy. And uh, thank you for uh, watching. And I hope you find me silly and funny and playful. And, uh, you know, wait, how the hell do you get... i got to go up here. And just playing these games brings me back to my childhood in a much more innocent time where uh, I didn't have any responsibilities to worry about. And, uh... Oh, got it. There we go. There's a secret up there. Yep. Some heat and ammo. And I think that's it. And unfortunately, because I got mauled, I would have done it technically, quote unquote, one attempt. But, uh, if you load the game from a save like I did at the start, yes, I want to continue. So anyway, oh, we're trying to uh, break into the secret weapons facility and recover a Venom gun, as you see down here. So the first part of the SFW, secret weapons facility, uh, industrial complex is the weapons factory. Various aircraft and heavy weapons were being manufactured here for, for before the bombing raid. You know what? You guys can read this. Half <laughs> the time I'm too drunk to read this anyway. And it just slows the gameplay down. So we're looking for the Venom Gun Project book in an attempt to find uh, some German secret weapons. Uh, anyway, let me save. And I don't think the Venom Gun is based off of any real life gun. I never used the. Uh, uh, Chain guns. Technically, a Gatling gun. No! Don't do that! Technically, they're Gatling guns. But I think it's a throwback to the original Wolfenstein 3D, where you get to use a chain gun. And that's like a super powerful weapon. Oh shit, that was a lucky headshot. Woo! <laughs> so, this, I believe, these broken aircraft are V1 bombers, I think. Although V1 bombers didn't have a cockpit, which is strange because they have the V tail. And the V and uh, V, V weapons, V1, V2, actually stand for vengeance, vengeance weapons. And the original V1, fun fact, was actually a normal, like, plane with, like, a rocket engine, I think it was. You can actually. <gasps> Who's dropping grenades? Asshole! Ow. You can actually kill them. Ow! What's a shuffle back? Really, bro? Fuck, cocksucker. Anyway. Um. Ooh, I got a super rifle. Oh. If you try to go through here, I think there's a dude with a Panzerfaust. And there's a guy with a machine gun. You basically die instantly. So, you're supposed to go through here. Anyway, the V weapons uh, are Stanford Avengers weapons, and they were long range, semi guided, quote unquote, weapons uh, that were designed to be basically terror weapons against um, enemy nations. Let me use my. Which way is it? This way? Oh, there's a guy with a flamethrower. This way. Drop him! Yeah, with my Thompson! I should be using the FG-42, but, uh... The Thompson's more fun to use, because you never get to get there. We gotta drop them in one shot. This goes up to the secret area, right? Yeah. We got some health. Right there, the team, bro. Grab the health! Alright. The V-1, um, was basically a jet plane, or a rocket plane. I don't know exactly what engine it had. It was on the top, just like that plane showed. And it would fire its rockets using some kind of guidance system that judged uh, how far the plane's gone based on the amount of fuel consumption. And because of the way the rocket fired, it would it would fire the engine in pulses very quickly. So it would sound like a machine gun, like... Like it would have a, a rhythm, a pulse to it. And the British, the British in World War II, called them buzzers because they sounded like a little bee or something buzzing its wing. The problem with a weapon like that is there's a guy up here and then there's the guy with the Panzer Faust! Remember I said there was a guy with the Panzer Faust that basically killed you instantly? Yeah, that was him. And yeah, that's that's where this was. But if you try to go through here, the guy with the machine gun plus the Panzer Faust, it kills you instantly. I actually think there is a way to get by that 
You can actually cut through here, but uh, it's very hard to do. Anyway, oh, can I blow that barrel? Yeah, I can. All right, so we got uh, grab the helmet, a flemet, and grab some beef. You know, I had to cross the right on his head. The, uh, the British got so good at shooting the planes down because they would fly extremely straight and extremely level. So the B-1s are very easy to shoot down. And they went pretty slow. And basically it would just fly for a certain distance. And it would know where to shut the engine off based on its speed. And as long as the speed remained constant... It would know exactly how far it's traveled based on the the, uh, the length of time that the engines are activated. And it would just shut the engine off and it would glide to the ground and blow up. That's just a pretty funny sequence, isn't it? So how do I disarm this thing? I told you, just clip the red wire. Or was it the blue one? Ah, hold on while I go get the manual. Never mind, they all look great to me anyway. <laughs> And if you run in there before they finish talking, it automatically blows up. So you can't actually... Oh, shit. Hello, Merry Christmas! <laughs> I think there's a secret over here. Let me grab the armor. Yeah, there's a secret over here. Oh, no, this is where I'm supposed to go. Fuck, let me get the regular rifle sniper. I don't think headshots work on these guys. Fuck, bro. How many times do I have to shoot him? Fuck! Oh, look! My sniper scope is off! There's a couple of levels that do that. See, look. I'm gonna aim right for where my hole is in the wall. And look, it shot up and to the left. And look, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna aim right for the hole. And it shoots up and to the left. The scope is off. That's not me being a bad shot. Look. I'm gonna aim for the center hole. See? Got it right in the middle, and it's going to hit right where that spot is in the upper left. See? Isn't that weird? And look, do it again. It's hitting there, and I'll do it again. Upper left. A couple of maps, levels, have the sniper scope off. It's off zero. Ah, jeez. I have to compensate. I don't know why the sniper scope is off in a couple of levels. I forgot which levels it does it in. But this must be one of them. I remember it does it in a few levels. Is there somebody down here? Yeah, no, I'm wasting ammo. Oh, jeez. There's a guy with a Panzerfaust! I don't know if I'm hitting the guy. I got him. You have to... Ow! You motherfucker! Oh, you gotta be shitting me, bro. He did a lot of damage. See, I, I have to aim down and to the right in order to get a hit. I don't know why that happens. My dad noticed that too when he was playing uh, the game. So here's the uh, Venom Project book. This is just... It's basically describing the breech locking and feeding mechanism of an MG42. Except, it says caliber 792. But when you pick up ammo for it, it says a 12.7, which indicates 50 cal, and that's a completely different design. You guys can pause and read this. It's all a fictional design. This gun never actually exists, as far as I know. And Gatling guns aren't very practical. For it. As cool as they are in video games, they're just not practical. Because they're, 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 they're too big, they're too heavy, and you can get the same effect from a fixed barrel, uh, a single bolt gun. Um... Actually, let me use the uh, Panzer Faust. Does he do that? Does he do that? No? Oh, well, I got slaughtered, man. Oh, man. Can't believe it. I got fucked up by that guy with the Panzer Faust. And, and I'm not going to blame it on the gun with the scope being off. I, I legitimately got caught by that guy. Anyway, the one guy drops the ladder. Jeez, I'm... That's good. I did not want to fall down like that. Now, I'm not loading the game. I'm just going to accept the damage. So I took an extra, what, 15 damage? Yeah, 10 to my armor, 5 to my health. 
fuck. I did not want to fall down like that. I wanted to walk over the edge and land on the bottom roof. Damn it! And there's no more health. I got a lot of ammo. Oh. Motherfucker, man. Alright, let me just uh, exit for... Uh, you actually have to jump across there. I thought it was a secret. Alright, the next level will recover our health. There's a lot of health in the next level. I swear to God, if I fall and die in these roofs, I'm gonna be livid. Oh, I shouldn't have jumped like that. I could have easily fallen off the edge. Is there any health over here? No, there's not. Jeez. I don't know if crouch jumping's a thing in uh pretend the guy's a wolf is here. No, it was big in half life. Anyway, let's continue. I'm gonna play this next map at train station, and then the sequel weapons facility. Yes, yes, yes. So anyway, uh, we're uh, approaching on the factory, and we're trying to find the entrance to the sequel weapons facility, which we know is in the area. And let me save. I'm probably gonna wind up doing this map several times. Now I know. And as soon as you open this door and step through, they spawn. So you can back up. He's gonna move before I cock my bolt. Where is he? Alright, and this guy's gonna. Alright, got him. I'm gonna die. Dude's down there. I want to use the pants. There's a dude over there. And the gun automatically kicks up into the right. You can't stop it. Oh, I see this guy. What the fuck? Hold on a second. Are we still recording? I think we're still recording. My my my, my window minimized. Oh! I don't know why I did that. <laughs> anyway, we'll continue. Picked up some small health packs. And then what we want to do is this. That's good. It missed. It's good. Didn't kill him. Get a fucking a scope keeps dropping whenever I fucking activate it. And then there's another area I want to use a scope on right here. All right, that worked as planned. Very good. And there's a smoking tube. You drop that like ejected brass. That's pretty cool. All right, there we go. And here's some armor and heat. All right, my fucking scope kept dropping when I was walking. If you're walking with your scope out, or scope on, like this, and you move, it drops. And puts you down into a hip fire, or waist fire mode, whatever they call it. And the fucking thing that pisses me off is, if you're running forward and activate the scope, see, look, I run forward, activate the scope, it drops me right out of it. You have to stop and then activate the scope. If I try to activate the scope while moving, it doesn't work. Which is a pain in the ass. Because if you're dropping, like, downhill, You'll accelerate more than you fuck. Very good. I fucking hate automatically closing doors in video games. Hate them. Because they always close in your fucking face. And I know why they do it to save memory, because the less area the player can see, the less it's loaded into video memory. But still, I fucking hate it. Even in modern day video games, they have automatically closing doors like a throwback to the past. I hate it. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I fucking hate automatically closing doors going all the way back to fucking Wolfenstein 3D. Now, and that's Keith, and look, <clears throat> jump in here, secret, grab some armoire, some goats, and some ammo. Now, I think, I think, you can actually use your super rifle, 
the guy's got a Panzer Faust. Where the fuck is he? Uh, there's a guy with the there's a guy with a Panzer Faust. You need to fire it? Ugh. <laughs> I love the Snooper rifle though, it's a really cool weapon. I think it's based off of the M14 or M1 Garand for the magazine. And the scope and that big round thing with the red light on it in front of my hand, my uh, forearm, my left hand, that's the battery. And uh, this is actually what it would have looked like in infrared. This kind of mint green, whitish, bluish kind of look. And that was a uh, real life M1 slash M2 carbine scope. Anyway, so let's keep going. We got this guy up here. And there's a guy to the right. And while you're firing, you can't move the mouse. It locks your mouse. Okay. When you sculpt. Yeah, while you're firing, what if you press down the fire button, it keeps shooting like it's fully auto. Even though that rate of fire is way too slow. It's, it's more like semi-auto. Very rapidly. But it locks out. Let me use this again. Come on, seriously, bro? Really, man? I stopped, aimed, fired, and the rocket just missed all of them up and to the left. God almighty, man. It had nothing to do with my aim. Go back and fucking look at the, uh, the footage of me shooting those guys. That rocket went all the way up and to the left. Dude in here, he's gonna fucking kill me. Yep. He's in here. And he's gonna kill me. We're gonna fire at the exact same time. Let me kill him with a grenade. Nope. <clears throat> Fuck, bastard. Grenades act completely differently in single player than they do for multiplayer. The uh, the pineapples do a ridiculous amount of damage. They almost have the same blast radius as uh, dynamite, but they don't do as much damage as dynamite close up. But the pineapples, they basically don't go anywhere, which is kind of realistic. Because the uh, now this guy is unarmed. No. Oops, sorry about that. My finger slipped. Who blew his glasses off? There you go, the glass. I killed him because he's a uh, weapons uh, specialist. And uh, he works for a company that uh, basically kills people for a living. Oh, I killed a guy. I'm gonna try the grenade again. Oof. The grenades act completely differently in single player than they do in multiplayer. In multiplayer, both the steel hand grenade, this, the German grenade, and the pineapple, the American Mark I or Mark II, whatever the fucking name it's called, fly the same distance, obviously, for balance. But the damage is also different. But if you've been playing a lot of multiplayer, which I haven't, but I'm just more used to multiplayer because I did more of that uh, later in my life. Before I gave up single player and started doing multiplayer in 2003, 2004. You get used to the way grenades work in multiplayer. And then when you go back to single player, they act completely differently. Especially the pineapple. Hurry up with those documents. I'm almost done. Just a minute. You don't have a minute. That's head wanted to leave an hour ago and he's furious. All right, all right, so why's a rush? He's leaving for the facility up north. Something big, that's all I know. Cool stereo sound, huh? Let me grab the armor. That's pretty cool, it spins. Anyway, so, two old train yard loading supervisors from the Penn Shusser. Subject priority shipment. The shipment of Swiss chocolate is due to arrive on 0900 with 9 a.m. The supply train. The shipment is to be delivered intact to the SS Senior Officer's Mess Hall. Mess, period. Mess, mess. 
mess. I guess it's mess whole mess same thing. Extra guards will be detailed to prevent pill. Okay, very nice. <laughs> Blank glass, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I didn't get it all. You know, it's probably people that uh, they don't piss off. I don't break every pain. Well, I'm sure nobody's watching these videos. But uh, anyway, if you are, thanks for watching for so long. I hope to uh, provide many, many, many hours of entertainment and uh, and laughs. And uh, I'm 30 years old, and I act like I'm a teenager sometimes. A little kid. And that's just uh, my giddy self. I like to play uh, video games, and uh, I used to play a lot of video games, particularly first-person shooters when I was young, especially Doom, Wolfenstein 3D, Wake, Wake 2. Those are my games. I remember I got into Quake 3, and I used to play Quake 2 multiplayer, and I used to get my ass kicked. I sucked. And then, in 2003, my dad got me a surprise birthday present. I wasn't really surprised, but basically announced that he was going to be building a new um, Iron Gaming PC. And at the time, I had a P2, Pentium 2, um, 233 megahertz processor with a uh, Hercules, I don't know what exactly, Hercules video card. It wasn't a Voodoo, it was a Hercules, which is a pretty good model back then. And, um, when I used to load Quake 3, and then later Medal of Honor, whoa! And Return of the Castle Wolf, it would actually load Return of the Castle Wolfenstein, but I had to play 640 by 480 in a window with everything set to low. I had it set to, uh, bilinear texture filtering, filtering, um, uh, whatchamacallit. Uh, 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 model detail set to low, shadows none, <coughs> full bright yes, because uh, rendering the map in full bright actually uses less processing power than, uh, than normal. And, uh, particles off, and the game would barely run. It would run at like 15 frames per second. But it would run. And surprisingly, I was actually able to play multiplayer because uh, my dad actually had a high-speed internet connection at the time. I think we had like 120 meg up, uh, meg down, and like 20 meg up. It was actually ridiculous in 2003, 2004. And um, because of my dad's high-speed internet connection, I was able to connect to uh, game servers with no problem. However, um, there was massive lag. And I experienced desyncing quite frequently. And uh, I just deal with it. And uh, I remember playing Wolfenstein Enemy Territory when it was a new thing. And they just had these six original maps. Yeah! Um, I'm missing a secret. Yeah, because I didn't get the. Uh, I'm not ready to exit yet. I think they had. Radar base, the Wolfbird radar, and Railgun as two demo maps, and that was it. There was nothing else. And you um, we were expected to play online, and it was like version 1.1. It was a really old version. And uh, yeah, there's a the second secret. Oh, perfect. There's some fuel on the grenades. And. Uh, you could barely play on my PC. But I remember playing with the graphics mode on, uh, on Mad Low, and um, everything set to minimum. And I remember looking at the, um, I was playing Fuel Dump. So I guess, I guess maybe it was um, the first campaign, Wolfberg Radar, Railgun, and then Fuel Dump. They didn't have Seawall Oasis, Gold Rush, and uh, what's the other one? Um, Seawall Battle. That's the North African campaign. I think they had the European campaign first, because I remember playing Fuel Dump on the server by myself, start, you know, new game. And I couldn't see the mesh, the the the, the air-cooled mesh jacket around the uh, 30 cal in the tank. It was just a single barrel and just blur. And I'm like, one day I'm going to be able to see the individual holes 
on the jacket because my dad had an upgraded P4 with a um, ATI, what was it, 9800? Woo! <laughs> That's 2003, 2004 time. That was the best video card you can get. Anyway, and I got the computer and uh, I was able to play Quake 3 very fast. And I realized the reason I sucked was not because I was a bad player, but because of the lag. I, the game would just lag, it would run at like 10 frames per second, and I didn't have the reaction time necessary to like rail people or win in a rocket launcher fight. And um, also, I was playing a lot of Quake 3 at the time, and I started off on the lowest difficulty I can win, and eventually I played through the entire single player campaign with the bots, and worked it all the way up to hardcore. And by the time I, a year later, when I was like 12, 13, I managed to beat the game on hardcore, and beating even playing single player, Beating zero on, uh, what is it called, the end, or this is the end of you, whatever it is, that last map in the seventh tier, that's a really hard level. And uh, you basically have to win by knowing the bot's AI, and knowing where he's going to be at what time, and knowing what to do. And you actually, one of the reasons you win is not because you kill him more times than he kills you, but knowing when he's going to jump to the BFG platform and shooting a little, um, shooting levitating thing in the space sky. Sky space, whatever you want to call it. The switch in the sky. And it drops the thing and he falls to his death and loses points. And that's how you catch up there. But anyway, long story short, I got really good really fast. Took me about a year. And I went back to my um, Return to Castle Wolfenstein and Quake 2 servers. And I was kicking ass. And everybody was accusing me of cheating. They're like, we know you, T Bone. Back then my name was T Bone before I was Cork Bowl. And uh, I kicked ass. I was actually really good. I wasn't super good. But I was at least in the top 15, 10%. I was really good because I had a really good reaction time, number one. My computer was better, and I was also getting older, so my, you know, my gross and fine motor skills were developing. But anyway, I remember when I was like 18, I think this is in 2008, one of the very last, pu very last public servers I ever connected to, I forgot what the name of the server was. But it was a Quake 3 server. Right before the Quake 3 master server went down. And I was kicking ass so bad people were quitting. I started off with like 10 people. And when I was done I was alone. I was the only one on the server. And I looked in the console because I don't reach out while I'm playing. And they're like, dude, what's with your auto aim? It's like, oh my god, this guy's running an invincibility cheat. And, oh, shit. <laughs> Knocked my beer over. But I wasn't. I wasn't cheating at all. I was playing normally. And people accused me of cheating because I had gotten so good so quickly. And I was used to kicking ass with computerized bots, which obviously are going to be faster and more skilled than computerized opponents. And then I started playing on Nightmare. And I was breezing through all the levels in Quake 3, single player with bots, on Nightmare. And that's really difficult. If you can beat Sarge or Phobos or... What's the level that's really hard on Nightmare? Even just Crash, the first level, she's hard on Nightmare. And I was playing over and over and over, and I was getting a ass kicked, but I was like, ah, they're bots, I don't really care. I used to get embarrassed and quit and get demoralized very easily. We used to play with these bots, and they used to try harder and harder and harder. And I used to, I used to go 100 rounds and just winning one, and I was like, that's a major victory. And I got so good so quickly. But anyway, enough of my uh, childhood history. That's why I feel like a child when I play these games, because it brings me back from when I was 12, 13, 14. I just love this shit. So anyway, uh, besides advanced weapons research development, the OSA has very little information on what goes on in the SFW. Kaiser Circle Intelligence does suggest that the SFW contains a U-boat pen that may be used as a debarkation point for another one of Dexed's research projects, although we have no idea what this might be at this time. The bombing raid has made a mess of communication stop side, so you should be able to initially lobby protect. They've got to locate the U will pen and obtain information on death's information. Next cutscene. Major, why are we not yet ready to depart? I will not be departing. My right apologies this time. here, all their cure, but the weapons loadout on the new I'm take one of my vitamins. Is, uh, Actually, been taking vitamin D recently. Anticipated. I don't have time for this nonsense. I have important business to attend to. I'll explain it in a this second. This boat leaves for the X Labs within the hour, torpedoes or not. Is that understood, Major? Perfectly, Herr Oberführer. I actually went to uh, college, and uh, I don't have. 
I have an associate's degree in nursing, but I don't have, uh, I have like a hundred and something credits. I have more than I need for an associate's degree, but I didn't get enough credits to get my bachelor's degree. And when I move, I definitely plan on getting my bachelor's degree. I'm pretty sure the, cre the cre credits will transfer because the school I went to was a community college. Anyway, and um, in nursing school, I realized that people are uh, pretty dumb and will believe pretty much any voodoo treatment. But I think that's more of a cultural thing. You know, a lot of uh, cultures believe in like holistic medicine, quote unquote. Now I'm all for holistic medicine. You know, where you pray and you do, you know, home home teas and remedies and shit like that. I believe in that. But the problem is people are just outright denying mainstream medical treatment and oh I'll just put sesame oil on my broken bone and it'll heal fine. No, no it won't. And nine times out of ten, those people come back with a massive infection, we have to amputate their arm. Now listen. I'm all for cultural diversity in healthcare. The problem is people are just ignoring basic science. And uh, there was people that didn't wash their hands or, uh, you know, would eat after taking a dump without washing their hands because there's no such thing as germs. They can't exist because the laws of uh, nature say that in order for something to be small enough to, for us not to see, they wouldn't have any energy in them. They believed in all kinds of stuff like that. And they didn't understand, you know, like basic cell biology. And a lot of people believe that the human body was one giant organism, like single cell organism. Like there wasn't, like the body wasn't made up of a million or trillions of individual cells. And there was people that thought that antibiotics were a bunch of crap because sickness is caused by impurities in the soul or your chakras or, or, or balance points were unbalanced. And a lot of people believe in the uh, the Greek four fluid theory, that there's four kinds of fluid in your body. I forget exactly how it works, but if you're vomiting, you need to replace that, and that's yellow fluid, bile. And blood is red fluid, I need to replace that by eating more meat, or, or crap like that. And some of it, some of it has basis. I won't get you wrong. But the problem is, we tell the person he's dehydrated because he's been puking for days because he's been sick. Oh! We'll just give him more, more sheep meat and he'll be fine. It's like, that's not how it works. And, listen, I understand if you're into holistic medicine. I, I, I believe in vitamins too. And the problem with it is, is people just ignore basic science. And, and oh, I that guy died. It's almost like, it's almost like, no! It's almost like, I hate to say it, but it's like people in some countries, like China, are being taught the wrong information on purpose. Like, like they want their citizens to die. And you got people that think you can get pregnant from sitting in the same seat as a man did. Even if you sit down, like, like they don't understand how basic biology works. And it's just, this just kind of upset me. And recently I've been reading on Reddit. I don't actually post on Reddit because I'll get torn apart by a thousand people. But it's like, it's like people don't understand the basics of life. Like, they don't understand about viruses and bacteria. They don't understand that certain foods have certain nutrients. They don't understand that drugs work by activating certain receptors or interfering with receptors in your body. And, 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 and it's like, oh, drugs are just chemicals that are designed to balance your soul. I don't, I don't understand. And I don't think it comes from ill-education or, or, or poor beliefs or religion. I think it just comes down to that's what they're taught in society. So you talk to a lot of people who have fled third world countries, like, this is what they teach in schools, that, that, that biology is, is that there, there, there are no microbes, that it's all, it's all, it's all so, so, so big pharma corporations can make money selling you white powder that doesn't have to have anything in it. Oh, shit! <laughs> gonna get for talking about controversial subjects. But anyway, I don't mean to offend no one, but it's just, oh, come on! How hard is it?
to jump from here to there. My God. Anyway, long story short, the reason that I was getting upset about a lot of this shit. Hello, can I pick that up? No. The reason I was getting upset about a lot of that shit was because it's like. People think that. Okay, I was talking about vitamins. And I started thinking vitamin D. And I was going to talk about a funny story with vitamin D. So, in high school, or not high school, but in college, in high school and college, I was taught that vitamins are essential. And a lot of diseases are caused by lack of vitamins. And when I was in nursing school and taking psych classes in 2008, 2009, there was a correlation between vitamin D deficiency, lack of sunlight, and increased indices of, um, what's it called? Seasonal Affective Disorder, or SAD. Let me just pause briefly because I want to explain this before I continue because uh, I must be making a fool out of myself. Anyway, and it said that there's a link between people with SAD, quote unquote seasonal affective disorder, they basically get depressed, suicidal, and anxious, and have fears and, and uh, unrealistic fears and feelings of dread and in the winter time, and it was linked to lack of vitamin D. And it said that lack of vitamins can cause neural and psychological defects. And vitamin D was put in the spotlight recently with coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever the fuck you want to call it, because it was researched as a potential cure or treatment. And I'm not going to propose any treatments for COVID-19 or coronavirus. But I was reading a lot of these studies and people were saying that since clinics have been researching vitamins as a treatment, they noticed some effects of vitamin D. And one of them was increased sleep, improved mood, and decreased anxiety. And if you read online, you'll get a lot of mixed reviews about people who say, Oh, vitamin D doesn't do anything. It's, it, it's useless just to stand out in the sun for 50 minutes every day and you'll be fine. But then some people are like, it has vast neurological effects, and other people say, oh, it does nothing in your brain, there's no psych effects whatsoever, and it has no part in your immune system, and then other people say, it's vital in regulating the immune system. The whole point is, I don't think we know what certain vitamins do. So I decided to try it for myself. So I started off with a very low dose. I started taking a single vitamin D tablet, um, an immediately soft gel in soybean oil, so it's rapid release. And vitamin D is fat soluble, so it does build up in your system. So I wasn't expecting to get results for a couple of weeks, months maybe. And it's uh, 50 micrograms per tablet, which is 250, with, um, 2,000 units. From the very first night I took one, I immediately started getting very vivid, very strong, very deep and intense dreams. And that was weird because I never really had dreams like that. And I was like, wow, that was a weird night. And then I took one the next night, the same thing. And I never had very vivid, very serious dreams like that before. I mean, you know, I've, I've had, you know, pretty intense, very serious dreams, but these were really full color, full emotions. It was a really vivid, almost like a hallucination. And I knew it was a dream when I woke up. I was like, wow, that was freaky. And um, I decided to stop for a few weeks, and the dreams went away. And I was sleeping back to normal. And then I took the drug, the drug, the vitamin again. And I started getting these dreams again. I'm like, well, vitamin D definitely is having an effect on my dreaming. It's either making me have vivid, intense dreams or making me remember these dreams more clearly. So, definitely, vitamin D is having some kind of uh, neurological impact. That, uh, ooh, look at that thing. <laughs> anyway, I'm about to finish the story up. I know a lot of people are going to think I'm crazy. But, uh, to finish my story, I've been taking the vitamin every day, just a 2,000 unit tablet, 50 micrograms a day with my meals, along with my normal multivitamin and an extra vitamin C tablet. And I feel pretty good. I feel, I feel pretty stable. I feel very good in the daytime. I feel, I feel every once in a while I get the blues. I'm not really depressed, but I've been sleeping much better. And uh, I've just been generally more positive over the last couple of days. And I really think it has to do with vitamin D. 
And the research paper says vitamin D has no neurological effect. It's inactive in the nervous system. It plays no effect whatsoever. And clearly it does because I'm having these dreams because of vitamin D. So the whole point is don't just dismiss a treatment as crazy because it sounds crazy. You never know. Oh boy, here we go. Wait, bro. No, 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 no. You don't want to do that. Oh! Blew his ass up. <laughs> Alright, now, anyway. So, vitamin conspiracies aside, let's pick up the vending one and see how much ammo we get. Alright, 353. That's good. I'm going to save. Because when you pick up a venom gun, it's a random amount between four, literally four bullets, and 499. Like I said in the previous gameplay, I think when I did the uh, video on the Thompson two gameplays ago, that you could pick up four, which is the minimum, and one less than the maximum ammo capacity. Very easily these things. Oh, jeez. Where the hell did you come from? I only remember one of them being there. Oh! Oh! What's up? God. I thought there was only one of them there. My God. Right, let me save. I'll refrain from my, uh... All right, then we break the wall open. We grab these things, which we clearly don't need. Yeah, see, ah, shit, I didn't show it. When I picked up the ammo, if you pause the video, it says 12.7 millimeter. And it says in the Venom Project book, yeah. Clearly, that it's, where is it? Uh, 7.92, which would be eight millimeter Mauser rounds. But it's not. Oof. All right. Alright, so we're almost done with this gameplay. I'm gonna finish up this level. And this is the dude that was buying the glass. Blah! Blah! And this lowers the glass. Actually, no, that lowers the bridge. This lowers the glass. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, tomato chocolate. That was the sound many of my friends would make when we were reloading in Counter Strike. Because if you listen to the AK-47 or the Glock 17 reloading, it sounds like tomato. Oh, damn, I got super lucky. Woo! All oh, headshots! <laughs> anyway, again, I don't want to make this... I don't want to make these videos controversial, but this is just my experience. And what I've... This is bullshit. It really is with this fucking jump. I, you have to jump crouch. And it just doesn't... Because if you don't jump crouch, you hit the top of the, um... Oh, this is ridiculous, man. This is ridiculous. I literally can't jump up here. You have to jump crouch. Because if you don't crouch, your head hits the bottom and you drop down. So, I just... I said, I think, in the last video, that jump crouching isn't a thing. It clearly is, because you need to jump crouch to continue this. Blah, blah. Break the fawn. Yeah. Where is this dude? Blab him. And again, that's the sound of uh, the uh, protagonist drowning in Quake. The two sounds, uh, Qu Quake 2. The two sounds, uh, Alright, this is not good. Because, uh, I know for a fact. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, that's the sound of the uh, protagonist drowning in Quake. Quake 2. Americana. Got a Deutschland. Yeah, Deutsch. Deutsch. Hey. Deutsch. Axel. <laughs> I love that sound. <laughs> I can only imagine it's making that gurgling sound because technically when you get shot in the head, it uh, destroys your airways and uh, blood 
fills up in your airways and uh, when people get shot in the mouth or throat, they tend to drown in their own blood. So that's the only uh, reason I can account for that sound. Anyway, so here we are in this sacred area. And I'm about to use my scoop of a rifle. Uh, that button I pressed opened the gate. It was a gate that dropped down here. Yeah, now it's open. And um, there should be a valve up here. This valve... I'm going to attempt to drop down without taking damage. Come on! I, I, you, I swear to God! For five seconds I tried to jump crouch over this, and it won't work. And I'm going to get damaged, of course. Like, I tried like five times, and I couldn't jump crouch. Anyway, and look, I'm going to click this. 50, 12.7 millimeters. That's uh, ammo for the Venom gun, see? And it says it's 7.92, which would be 8 millimeter mouse on. Anyway, so we're going to use the Snooper rifle to kill off the remaining elite guards defending the complex. There's one, two, what? No, this isn't right. Wait. Or, there should be one more. Um, I don't see him. Now here's something quite disturbing. If you open this and go in here, you can see there's actually a snooper rifle. That's not a normal sniper scope, that's snooper rifle. I'll pick it up. Ah, that's good, that's good, that's good. I want to pick up snooper rifle. Hey, he says snooper rifle, bottom left. Yeah, so the Germans had a snooper rifle just kind of chilling here. And then face a swastika. All right. Oh, and by the way, that submarine, you can't do anything with it. Looks kind of cool. Okay. A little bit small. It would be bigger. But if you follow it in there, eventually the gates will close <gasps> and you just drown. It doesn't actually go anywhere. So there's nothing you can really do about the, uh, There's nothing you can actually do about the, uh... You actually have to blow those barrels up to open that. And then there's a dude that's trying to find which can't shoot through the bulletproof. Yes! Oh, that's another sound effect I made a lot in the last gameplay, walking through, uh... It's walking through gravel. In, um, I think, uh, America's Army. Uh, seriously. Ow! I'm actually gonna go black and um, pick up the heat and armoire. <gasps> Yay! Okay. Two, and then armoire. Hey! Alright. Now he's pretty good. That's actually a sound effect from America's Army. When you're walking, it literally sounds like that. Like that's a perfect impression. I should record gameplay when you be uh, walking through. It sounds. It sounds like it was almost made by human mouth. It's so pristine. Anyway, I think that's uh, that's it. Yep. And then we press use on the door, and here we go. I will not diverge any information to you. They're going to Norway. The Norway. Are 67 degrees north by 16 degrees east. That's it? 
No, Jim. No, 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 no. Alright. So we're gonna play a cutscene and then we'll end the gameplay footage. Well, Jack, Agent Blaskowitz is certainly full of surprises. There's no denying that. No, sir. Of course, I always knew he was resourceful, but I never imagined he had such um, expert interrogation skills. <clears throat> well, from BJ's interrogation of the officer, we now know the approximate location of Death's Head's so-called X-Labs in occupied Norway. What have we learned from our defecting scientist? Well, unfortunately, not as much as I'd hoped. He was pretty badly shaken when we got a hold of him, and he still hasn't completely recovered. He kept referring to a Project Uber Soldat. Super Soldier? Yes. From what I could piece together, it involves some bizarre synthesis of robotic and biological engineering. Uh, for what purpose? Apparently, to create the ultimate killing machine. Good lord. According to the scientists, this project is Death's Head's baby. The thing most near and dear to his heart. And he's been working on it in one form or another since 1937. I suppose that explains the proto-soldier blueprint and those loping monstrosities as well. But it still doesn't explain the involvement with the occult. No, it doesn't. And there's only one place where we're likely to find that out. Yes, and that's why Agent Blaskowitz is on his way to the X-Labs in Norway well, as we speak. Of course I am. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to read the mystery briefing and I'll end this gameplay footage there. All right, so part mission five, this heads playground. Part one, ice station, Norway. Your interrogation of the officer in the SFW, secret weapons facility, has yielded to the location of Death's Heads X Labs in occupied Norway. Our defecting SFW scientist has also revealed the nature of what is taking place at the X Labs Project Uber Soldats or Super Soldier. This is Death's Heads most advanced tech, tech, most advanced technology project. Apparently, combining robotic and biological engineering to create the ultimate killing machine. By itself, the Super Soldier could pose a considerable threat to the Allies, but it appears that this project may have some other connection to the SS Paranormal Division. In any event, the X Labs must be infiltrated at all costs. We must know what Death's Head's ultimate goal is for the Super Soldiers and, if possible, what their connection is to the SS Paranormal Division. So, we'll breach the X Labs outer compound and gain access to the main secure lab. So, this is pretty cool. But anyway, I'm going to leave this uh, episode of Return to Castle Wolfenstein here. Um, again, I uh, hope you enjoyed watching and uh, hope you're not offended by my comments and enjoyed my rant on uh, vitamins and holistic medicine and what uh, some education I have uh, quite amusing. But anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll definitely be posting more of this gameplay and I plan to see this game to the end. I actually plan on playing some Wolfenstein 3D. And definitely some Wolfenstein 2009, the reboot. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a good night. Thank you, and goodbye.